get started, I want to point something out that's important. Over on Twitter, and I know some of you are like, Twitter is not important. Twitter is very important. It's not the be all and end all, but it really is important in terms of, you know, the image of a project, right? I mean, we it's just like trailer views. People want to know if something trended. So right now, number one is WandaVision, Disney, Disney Plus's first Marvel show. And you know, WandaVision last week, didn't trend at all. WandaVision had a little bit of a problem after its debut. People were like, where's this going? Well, it went there this week, and that's why it's trending number one. So good for them, fabulous episode. Check out all my coverage, which is already up for that um, for that new latest episode, episode four. But right behind it at number four is the Snyder Cut with just posters, posters and a release date. That's incredible. I don't know why some people at Warner Brothers, uh, who, you know, you know the drama that's going on there, but it's crazy that there are any enemies of the Snyder Cut that still exist when it's clearly such a potent weapon in Warner Brothers' arsenal against the competition. They want HBO Max to be hot stuff? This is the hottest stuff they've got. Also, as many of you have been tweeting me, Nielsen adjusted its numbers because they finally added HBO Max to their, uh, to, their an- to their analysis. I'll be talking about this more in depth on Movie Math on Sunday, but it turns out that When you do count HBO Max, Christmas week, Wonder Woman 1984 blew soul out of the water. So HBO Max is number one uh, on that list. You know, that's usually all Netflix with a couple of Disney flies in the the ointment. Uh, But now uh, HBO Max is number one. So that Wonder Woman 1984, by the way, is produced by Zack Snyder. So Zack Snyder, very valuable to Warner Brothers. And so I wish that they would, you know, get out of his way in their own way. But very cool, and that's it's really it's a, it's an important feather for the Snyder Cut's cap that it's so competitive again with just posters. So yes, Friday, January 29th, Zach Devation. I love that you guys call it that. <clears throat> Zach Snyder, I'd say so mar- so much doesn't have fans anymore, but like Zach Snyder's army, and you guys are really good. That is a great great term. So I love I'm, I'm, I love Zach Devation. So Zach Devation is today. And it was with three gorgeous posters, which I'll be breaking down in the second half of this video. But first, some goodies. For instance, a lot of you are like, when's the next trailer? Uh, there's only one more trailer left to go, as uh, Zach said in my interview with him on uh, Christmas. Uh, and that is going to be, I'm hearing, February 14th. Now, that not only means that Zack Snyder is giving the Snyder Cut army quite the valentine, but that, of course, is 214, which many of you recognized immediately. And that is a hallowed number for Snyder. Now, if you, for those of you who aren't familiar as to why that number is so important, it was the original runtime for his Justice League movie, which is now four hours plus. Oh, boy! But as he was looking at the Snyder Cut and he was, you know, you know before, before you know, it was greenlit to, to be done officially at HBO Max, this thing over the years kind of like took on new meaning. And, you know, Zack Snyder himself would play with it on social media. He'd make some gorgeous memes, as you can see here. You made some memes. A lot of memes were made. And the number took on new meaning. So speaking of dates and numbers, which are very important to Zack, as you can see, as I've also reported to you earlier, um, the Snyder Cut was originally going to hit HBO Max March 25th. I've seen some rumblings about predictions for other dates. It was always March 25th. March 25th was the date until a week ago. That, for reals, that was when it was going to come out. Even less less than a week ago, as of like uh, like Monday, basically. March 25th was the date. Um, and the reason that's important is because that's the anniversary of the release of Batman v Superman. So that's that's another thing that ties it all nicely together. So what happened? Why is it coming out March 18th? Well, I told the whole story in detail um, on the live stream on Tuesday when the Godzilla vs. Kong new date emerged, but I'll give you a quick rundown here. So again, the Snyder Cut has some enemies within Warner Brothers. So what do you know? Godzilla vs. Kong recently was moved up to March 26th. Oh, is your movie there too? So they were right the day, you know, 25th and 26th, you know, the same, uh, one day apart. So at that point, the Snyder Cut team, even though they had, again, the March 25th date first, they just wanted to get away from Godzilla versus Kong. So then they started saying to HBO Max and Warner Brothers, hey, can we move our movie up a week to the 18th? Now, some of you have said, why not move it up two weeks to the 11th to, to debut between in that window between WandaVision and Winter Soldier? Well, I've heard that the, the Snyder Cut won't be ready any earlier than the 18th. So the 18th is the earliest that they can do. So the Snyder Cut team was trying to get HBO Max and Warner Brothers to agree to move them up, but 
you know, Warner Brothers and HBO Max were a little slow about it. They were like, oh yeah, these two films are back to back. That's crazy. What should we do about it? Let's think about it. So I heard, I heard that was happening at the end of last week. And I decided to tweet about it when the Godzilla vs. Kong trailer came out. I was like, you know, people need to know about this before it's too late when we can't do anything about it anymore. So you guys, when, once I tweeted that out, because uh, again, Zack Snyder Army is the best, you guys forwarded that tweet to Jason Keelar in a very polite way, most of you. Uh, he's the head of Warner Media and therefore Warner Brothers and HBO Max. And what do you know? So I tweeted that information out on a Sunday, and by Tuesday uh, afternoon, evening, Godzilla vs. Kong had been moved domestically to March 31st. Now, they're still saying it's going to open overseas on the 26th, although it's starting to be apparent that the Snyder Cut will be available overseas wherever HBO Max content usually plays. So on your HBO channel in your country or someplace else where you know where you would find that content. So that's exciting, although I would think it might affect Godzilla vs. Kong. And, um, you know, so so we'll see. So we'll see what Godzilla vs. Kong does about it. It's, it's maybe I don't, maybe they feel it's too hard to change the theatrical release. But so it's theatrical overseas the 26th, domestic on HBO Max and in theaters in the United States March 31st. And then the Zack Snyder cut, uh, the, the Zack Snyder's Justice League, instead of staying on its original date, it did also move up. So Kong moved Kong moved back and Zack Snyder's Justice League moved up. Uh, to really give a nice distance between the two projects. And now, uh, March 18th, as you can see, giving it a one-day jump on Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which debuts the very next day. Disney better hope their first episode is a doozy. And I wouldn't be surprised if Disney maybe decides to do two episodes of Lo uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. That Those episodes are longer. WandaVisions are about 20 minutes, which is why they released two on the first day. Um, but so... Falcon and Winter Soldier, it would be a bigger deal to release to, but you know we'll see what Disney does as a response to this because it's a, it's a bold move from HBO uh, Max, and we love to see it and the Snyder Cut. So again, this will give fans, I'd say, like as you can see, two weeks devoted entirely to the Snyder Cut before Godzilla vs Kong comes along on the same platform, and I think that's a good size break. All right, so let's break down these beauties. Oh, they're gorgeous. Now, when I heard the description, I didn't hear the description. I heard that, actually, I did hear the description. I heard the description of two of these posters. And when I heard about this one, I told you it was meta. I, it was my favorite from the descriptions. Uh, the film canister and the broken concrete, Snyder written in red on the front. It just is so cool. I just really love it. But I think visually, the background is so dark that you can't really see what you're looking at. I had to pick a poster with, to go with my trailer tweet about the trailer dropping on the 14th. And I thought that this one, I felt this one just really didn't catch your eye. I think it has, it's, it's meta, it's meaningful, but visually, I don't think it quite works in terms of execution. So this is actually, my least favorite of the posters now that I've seen them. Uh, I love them all, but this is my least favorite. My favorite is this one because so, for so many reasons. The first is that it's a callback to the iconic death of Superman comic book cover where his cape is tattered as the flag. Here it's an actual flag, but I, I, I love that homage. And then of course, this is the Superman movie where he has a black suit. So having the black Justice League flag ties into that really nicely. Also, it's a reference to the nightmare sequence from which, uh, from which what I've heard and seen a little bit of, that's gonna really blow people away. That's gonna be a major talking point about this, uh, about the Snyder Cut. It's very exciting and I'm not, I'm not gonna say anything else for fear of giving anything away. And also that makes this a, a story poster. It's referencing a very clear sequence in the film. So that it reminds you of that. And then also with the skyline and the rack, the, you know, the different levels of focus, it starts to pull you in. There's actually a shot like this in the first trailer, which also pulls you in. But you know, you feel like any moment this, this visual could pan or push in. And so I, I think this is like a, a story poster and I think it just works really, really well. And the white sky makes the black flag really stick out well. It's, it's very clear and crisp. And then the rocks are very dark. So the date and the HBO Max logo really pop. I just love it. Best execution, my favorite poster. And it's the one I, that's the one I tweeted with. And then there's this third poster, which I like very much. This is very powerful to me. This is, to me, this is the action poster because you feel like someone just broke the Justice League logo with tremendous force. Who could it have been? And who would do that? Who would disrespect the Justice League logo like that? But it survives because it's the Justice League. This is the first one that was tweeted out by Zach this morning. And uh, it's where we all first saw the date officially written out. And so I think the poster also therefore takes on another, another level of special meaning 
meaning to me for that reason as well. So that's how I feel about them. That's my ranking. So what's your favorite poster? Meta, story, or action? Or as uh, Zack Snyder refers to them, reborn, risen, or fallen. And what do you think of these official dates? 214 for the trailer, again, barring any shenanigans from Warner Brothers, 318 for the movie itself, and then Godzilla vs. Kong on 331. Oh, exciting! Share those thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.